In this video, I'm going to be sharing with you um, some tips for how to stop the bunch tight end in Madden 21. What's up, guys? My name is Cody, and I want to thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to watch this video. Now, if you're new to the channel and you don't know what my channel is about, my channel is basically all about how to become a better Madden player in Madden 21. And one of the ways that we try to help you guys become better players is through just sharing different things that we learn as we learn them. And this is a defense that I've recently um, been uh, more of a theory, but it really can apply to multiple formations um, that I've been using lately that has been super, super helpful for me um, just when it comes to building a scheme and building a defense. And so what I want to talk about today is a cover four kind of quarter style zone drop match defense that you can use to really 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 box um, a lot of the bunch tight end and there's a lot of adjustments to it but it's not a ton once you kind of understand it and understand the why behind it so i'm going to dive right in here um, if you have any questions about this video you can always feel free to text me my cell phone number is literally in the top left hand corner of your screen and again if you haven't subscribed yet it is completely free to do that it allows you to get access to all of the content that i produce for the youtube channel um, and just keeps you up to date on kind of some of the things that are happening so anyways all we're going to talk about today is bunch tight end. In my opinion, bunch tight end is the best offense in the entire game. In my opinion, it's the hardest to stop in the entire game. It's why I wrote an ebook on this exact offense, right? If you want to get a free sample to that ebook, you can always text me um, for it. But we're going to start talking with PA Boot over, and we're going to kind of work uh, through a couple of things and adjustments that they will make to their their scheme. So, um, real quick here, I want to cover coaching adjustments. You're going to see that um, for, for coaching adjustments, I have auto flip on, auto alignment to default, ball in air to play ball, cornerback matchups on balance, option defense on conservative. But this is really the important part here. And I have the flats on, on um, I have the, the flats on 30, I have the curl flats on 10, and I have the hooks on 5. You can bump these back to 5 if you want to. I find that 10 yards to me is a little bit more, um, it's just better for something like the slants and curls and things like that. And they'll still come down and tackle flat routes. They just may not stop them, you know, entirely. Now the defense we're going to be basing out of is the cover four show two in the three three five wide. You see here, uh, one of the beauties that I don't think very many people know about the three three five wide is it actually contains a lot of match defenses within it, and one of those defenses is the cover four show two, which uses the match principles of cover four quarters, which is my favorite way to play defense in the game through the cover four uh, quarters look. Now, um, to explain this best, I'm going to talk a little bit about quadrants and why that matters so much in a cover four style of defense. So if you divide the field into four major zones or four major quadrants, especially the deep area of the field, I would say that there are th these are kind of the things that you have. And I'm going to use, um, if you watch on your screen here, I'm going to show you this with Kevin King. So you have the left side quadrant, meaning this left side numbers, okay? that, that That's what I kind of think of when I say the left quadrant, um, the left side quadrant, that's what I'm talking about, the left side numbers. You then have the left side, um, the left side hash. This is a little bit more to the middle of the field, but I call this the left quadrant two. This is the left side hash mark. This is in the middle of the field. Okay, there are certain routes that are going to be very effective right up the seam of the of the defense. And then I have the right side second quadrant, which is the right side hash mark, as you can see right here in the in this area of the field. And then I have the right side numbers, as you can see out here, and I call this the right quadrant. Based on which quadrant there is a receiving threat, that means a lot in terms of how your defense is going to play. So um, when you talk about cover four quarters, they kind of do the same thing within the basics of the coverage shell. If you take a look at the play art here, you're going to see that I have a I have a corner going into the left uh, side numbers, as you can see right here, that's Nickerson. I have a cornerback going in the left side um, hash mark, so quadrant left side quadrant two, as you can see here. I have someone going into the right side quadrant two, which would be Jackson. And then I have someone going in the right side numbers or the right side quadrant, which is Jair Alexander, as you can see. So four quadrants, four spaces, four quarters, and four um, sp specific positions of the field. 
Now the problem or, or something that I think is really important to consider is depending on where the ball is within an offense, it does definitely change where they can attack. So for example, right here, um, if I were to put this corner, uh, Nickerson, into a into a uh, cloud flat, and I were to leave King in this zone right here, one of the things that you're going to notice is, let's say that they try to run a streak to the slot receiver, because that streak is in the is in the quadrant that he is actually defending, he can take care of that because when you when you work with quarters a little bit one of the things that you'll find out pretty quickly is the quarter zone is probably the glitchiest and the smartest zone in the game um and what i mean by that is they just they do a better job than a lot of zones at taking care of a lot of things so for uh, another example let's say that i let's say that i dropped this guy king let's say that i dropped him into a um let's say that I dropped him into a curl flat zone okay and so now i only have one zone going deep okay so i want you to watch how this plays so we're going to use kind of a another concept that we like to use just use inside switch here um but i just want you to watch Devonte adams snap of the ball up the seam and what you're going to see is that outside quarter because of his positioning of the field he's only tabled to cover the numbers he's not exactly tabled to cover the the the, the hash mark so he doesn't go play that Okay, so that's a little bit about the inside versus the outside quarters. The next thing I want to talk about a little bit is what could they do? What would they likely do to stop this? So another thing that they could possibly do is that they could go to something like the play inside switch and they could run two of their receivers vertical and one of their receivers as a check down. So you could see something like this. And if you take a look at this, though, because of the spacing of the field, you see they can hit this route to Lazard over the top. So when they motion receivers, there, there becomes different threats that they can threaten, different quadrants that they can threaten. Okay, so let me, let me break it down just a little bit more. So if I, was in a, um, if I was in a gun doubles or a gun spread, it's different than a three by one or, or gun trips. So what you'll see here is I'm in gun spread. This is why a lot of people from trips tied in like to motion in. A lot of people from trips tied in motion into this, right? This look probably looks familiar to you. Um, you've probably seen this before. This is basically trips tied in with the running back on the left side. But as you can see, you know, we have trips trips to the left. We motion back to the right, and this creates two by two. The reason that two by two um, is is you is inter it's just interesting how this all works. But if you divide it into quadrants once again, what I can do is I can do this right here. I can run four receivers vertical, and then I can have a running back that that basically sits down. So now, if you look at this cover four defense, let's say that I take away um, the left side the left side quarter. Well, if they run a receiver over the top of that, what you're going to notice here is I can basically fit this in hard outside passing. It is a little bit tender of a throw, but I can fit it in. And then I can obviously fit this into the other side of the field. So let me just kind of go back to that same combination. And I just want you to watch what happens. This is a basic four verticals concept, but you can do this out of two by two, whether it be spread, whether it be doubles, it doesn't really matter. Um, but you'll see these two verticals here. Now I only have one quarter divided by two. And now what you're going to notice is all of a sudden it changes how things are going to play. As you can see, this guy's wide open and it's a touchdown. Okay. So two things that can kind of really affect this, this defense as we pertains to bunch tight end. The first one is where the receivers are. And the second one is where the ball is. Okay, where the receivers are and where the ball is. Those are two things that you have to really wrap your head around if you're going to play good defense. All that to say, here's your base setup for gun bunch tight end. The base setup that I like to go with is a double Mabel coverage. So literally all I'm going to do is I'm going to put both of these guys into soft squats on the outside that are shaded at 30 yards. From that point, I'm going to shift my D-line to the side of the running back. I'm going to throw a three-rack hook out there to the tight end. And then the last thing that I like to do is I like to man up whoever I think can be the problem. In bunch tight end, the, most of the time, um, if you actually think about how bunch tight end works, the only receiver that can really hurt you is either the slot receiver or the outside left receiver. The, 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 the first guy can't hurt you as bad. So 
And then again, whoever they motion, I will always man up whoever they motion. If they motion out a player, I'm manning him up. If they motion to the other side of player, I'm manning him up. I will always man up whoever they motion. So in this example, you're going to see that I'm going to man up Lazard. That's kind of my foundation starting point. And this is PA boot over, okay? So just so we're clear, this is PA boot over. And I just want you to watch what happens. I'm going to make sure that I pass commit. This is probably the best play in the game. And as you can see here, this 30-yard flat zone will defend that crosser, okay? Especially, especially if you have the inside quarter zone because there's no receiving threat on the right side. Now, let's say that they did a motion out of the PA boot over, all right? This is one of my favorite ta uh, tactics. If I was running PA boot over, this is what I would do. So if I saw a defense like this, one of the first things that I would do is I would essentially motion over somebody to go vertical. So um, in this example, it's going to be um, it's going to be Valdez Scantlin or not Valdez Scantlin. It's going to be Lazard. And I just want you to watch this defense. Now, if I see this, my knee jerk reaction is I will almost always put that safety into a deep half and man up whoever they motion. So you see here, I'm going to put that deep half out there, man up whoever they motion. And now what you're going to see is there, this kind of takes care of a lot of things, and this crosser is still taken away. So now all you have to do is take away the delay fade route um, after you kind of hand off the crossing route to the other quarter or to the other zone. So that's another little rule of thumb. And the reason that I like to do that is because ultimately the route combination that I think they're going to employ – is going to be something like um, this right here. So they're going to run something like an inside switch type of play where they basically have you know two receivers going vertical and then they're going to have uh, two receivers going underneath. So if you think, they think about it like that, again, we're going to kind of set up that basic coverage uh, right here. And then again, we're going to man up whoever the problem is, right? Now, as soon as they motion over uh, Devonta Adams, as soon as they motion over, I'm going to instantly deep half, and I'm going to cross man every single time. And now what you're going to see here is this tight end, he can't go deep middle. The tight end can't win that battle. And the deep half has now split, split the field into halves as opposed to quarters. Quarters splits the field into four. Halves split the field into two. And so a half will always split the, dub, the double vertical, meaning he will split and he will play halfway in between the outside vertical and halfway in between the uh, inside vertical. So if they were to run a combination, let me just show you real quickly. Let's, and I'm just for the sake of um, for the sake of time here, I'm gonna I'm kind of kind of just automatically set up the adjustments that I would do. But let's say they ran PA boot over, and let's just say for for sake of example here that they. Um, they streak the tight end, okay, and then they're going to take Valdez uh, or Lazard here, and they're going to put him on a vertical to the left. Now I want you to watch. They're going to get him all the way out here, snap of the ball, and watch this deep half. If I try to pass that tight end route, you see the deep half makes it difficult for me to do so, right? Because I have an inside quarter and a deep half kind of playing together, there's nowhere for them to go. Now if I had two deep halves... Let me show you that real quick. If I were if I were playing this and I and I went just traditional um, just traditional cover two really and I had two deep halves, you're going to see that it's a lot different of a defense that you're going to need to play. Um, and let me just show you what I'm talking about. So let's send him vertical, um, and then let's send the tight end vertical. And now what you're going to notice, and, and and most people aren't going to do a combination like this from bunch tight end. Some people might, but most people aren't. But what you'll notice now is watch this tight end. You see that there's no deep work for that deep half to get, and he's going to come back inside and basically play like an inside quarter. Those are little things about this coverage that make a big difference. Um, now, lastly, I want to talk about curl flat corner for a second, and I want to move the ball to the, the right side hash mark. The bunch tight end is definitely, in my opinion, a lot better on the right side hash mark. The problem um, that most people run into when they run a lot of bunch tight end is they don't understand – the power of the hash marks in, from, in terms of how it's going to help their offense or uh, make their offense a little bit more complicated. Complicated. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about curl flat corner. Everything else is the same. All the adjustments are the same. But I want to show you an example of a defense 
And this comes back to what I was saying. When always man up whoever motions. Whoever motions always gets manned up. So uh, with that, that's one of the rules of the defense. So again, I've got the cover two set up here with the seam flats and the clouds. And my base person that I always man up is triangle. Because if they don't motion anybody, triangle is the problem. As soon as they start motioning people, though, I change who I man up. So in this example here, what you're going to see is they're going to motion out Lazard. As soon as they motion him out, I'm going to quickly um, man up him on Lazard. They snap the ball, and you're going to see he's going to run out there. And as you can see, that soft squat's going to sit on the best, probably, in my opinion, the best corner route in the game. Right? The best corner route in the game. Now, is there a way to beat this defense? Of course there's a way to beat this defense. There's a, a way to beat every defense, right? Um, if I were to do something like this, let me show you here. So this is curl flat corner. All I'm doing is I'm going to put the out route out there, and I'm going to leave that corner route on its deep vertical stem. It now is going to be treated a lot differently. You're going to see it's more of a vertical route, and I can pass lead this up against this defense. So, yes, you can. Yes, you can. Um, one other little piece of advice though, whenever you're playing this defense, I highly recommend, highly recommend, um, wherever there's a vertical threat. So for example, let's say that they motion out, um, let's say that they motion out the left side receiver, right? The same exact scenario. The only difference is all I'm going to do is I'm going to motion out the left side receiver. Okay. Um, what I want, to, I want you to watch here is watch the defense. So the, the only adjustment that I'm going to do is man up Lazard now. All right, it's a different set of rules. They motion out Lazard. When they motion him out, I just throw a deep half on that side of the field. And I see the vertical. The vertical, see how he splits them? Those are little things that you can do whenever you start to see people motioning people around. If they go to the outside where they can now threaten the outside quadrant of the defense, put a deep half out there. It's an easy little adjustment. But when they're in compression like this, it is darn near impossible to beat this defense if you play it like this. Um, and if you use some of these rules, you will have a lot of success. And I mean literally a ton of success. Let me show you this same play, but now we're not going to motion anybody out. And because we don't motion anybody out, I have triangle manned up. That's how I would play this if I were if I were running this. And you'll see the same route combination. Now look, completely taken away by the man coverage and by the cloud flat, as you can see right there. Changes everything about how the defense works. So in summary... In summary here, obviously the 335 wide ebook goes into a little bit more detail about all of this stuff, gives you a little bit more of like an if this and that. And if you like this breakdown, I would encourage you to get the sample for the ebook. Um, if you want to go ahead and get the full defense, it's in the description. But the sample is free. It's an hour long. All you got to do to pick it up is just text me. My number is 812-216-3644. But in summary, what you want to look at here is, again, if they have a vertical threat, that's where the deep blue zone needs to be, in the quadrant. So right here, all of the receivers are in the either the left hash mark or the right hash mark. There's no receivers in the numbers. We don't have to worry about defending outside the numbers. We just have to worry about defending the hash marks with our quarters. Okay. Once a receiver goes out, like Lazard, then we have to change our mindset and go to a deep half perspective. So something like this, it's such a simple play, um, but you'll see it just does so much for your defense, right? Now you see that deep half plays everything. If there's no vertical, he doesn't play it. He plays the outside quarters. Um, but because you base out of cover four and you adjust out of a cover four, it makes, in my opinion, the defense play significantly better than if you don't do that. Um, even something as simple as a set of two streaks um, to the wide side of the field, which if you actually think about this, this should get open. But again, it comes back to we almost always will man up whoever they motion out. So if they motion out Lazard, we're going to man him up. And now you're going to see here that this streak up the seam is not really there, okay? Um, not really there because you have an inside quarter coming back on the other side as well to be able to help with that. So anyways, all that to say, that is some of the principles that I have been using defensively over the last couple of days that has really, really changed how I see defense and how I see adjustments. I think you could learn a lot from this. I hope you did. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you have any questions, be sure to text me. And again, just a quick reminder, if you want to get the full defensive ebook, that link is in the description and we'll see you on stream tonight at 10 p.m. Eastern.